Hello once again, judges. Today I come to present one more argument today to the question, do law enforcement and harm reduction measures have competing interests? Rather than saying yes or no today, I would like to provide a more complex solution in which we look into the, the questions of ethics, politics, societal measures, and economics. To briefly define the difference between law enforcement and harm reduction in reference to my speech today, I look at law enforcement as a way of punishment and crime. We look at harm reduction as a way of reducing addiction and social, and social negative externalities across the board. To begin ethically, no, law enforcement and harm reduction measures do not have competing interests among ethics. The goal is the same. The interest is to diminish the negative externalities associated with drug use, whether on oneself or with others. The means are much different of getting to such a solution. One looks to punish, the other looks to assist. But both look to bring justice to the situation at hand. They both look to help the person and society around it. Next, I'd like to delve into the politics of the situation. Yes, politics do, within law enforcement harm reduction measures, there are political measures that have competing interests. Politics have dominated the differing emphasis that we have today between the two. Law enforcement has migrated from its original purpose, which is justice among our societies. Rather, it has become saturated with politicking in which the powerful dominate the powerless. Too much political leverage exists within such a system. Meanwhile, harm reduction measures have simply become to become reactionary and banal among our society. We only look to fix such things when mass atrocities happen or those are die, die or become harm or are harmed. It is so banal as well as it has become something that we are just used to in today's society, where roughly it is unacceptable and not appropriate for where we've come today. Education is the one thing missing between the two. Change is not lost within the political stigma. Change, change is also lost within the political stigmati stigmatization generated from law enforcement in reference to harm reduction measures. Clearly, politics have obstructed the real truth from coming out and the real solutions from existing here today. Third, I would like to go on to the social aspects of today's question. Yes. Law enforcement and harm reduction measures have competing interests socially. Lack of proper education amongst the capabilities of law enforcement versus harm reduction have created a magnanimous divergence among societies. The solution is no longer universal around the world. Countries, no matter what regions, have different societies in place. If there was one true solution to the social problems within these societies, it should be universal. But however, it is not today. Even excusing the producer or consumer role within each nation, divergences exist. They are not the same. Why this is the case? Because of social aspects and how to combat such issues. Further social divide exists between people within each specific society. Our communities are split between beliefs across demographics, not just hand in hand with each demographic. Once again, we come back to proper education. People have been misled, whether by politics, ethics, or wherever else, about the role of drugs in our society and how to combat them. To simplify, yes, socially we have created a divergence between law enforcement and harm reduction measures. Unfortunately, we have created competing interests. For my fourth point today, I would like to focus on the economics. Yes, law enforcement and harm reduction measures have competing interests economically. Competing interests exist today, and in, in, competing interests exist in whichever way that can generate the most money for the stakeholders at hand. Most money for, for those has come from those in power, in which they have become the common denominator in our decision making today. Those in power that seek to gain economic gain from such, from such values have taken advantage of the morality of the situation. They have done so to make money. They have done so out of greed. They have not done so out of the righteousness of their own societies. Thus, law enforcement looks to penalize people, it looks to make money off of private prisons, it looks to dominate those that are marginalized and impoverished. Meanwhile, harm reduction measures once again have left in the cold as something where not enough financing has gone to, although solutions have been promulgated and exist. 
Money has obstructed the truth, and once again, education has become the delineating factor. Those in power have not been taught the conf- concept of selflessness. Rather, they have abused the, the resources, the human capital, and people on earth to, to imprison them and jail them, rather than teaching them how to reduce the harm within their self and those within society. Thus, we have found ourselves today to one, lastly, one last time summarize a split between our different, the different factions within our, within our societies and life and in the relation to law enforcement and harm reduction measures. To one last time simplify, four, I, I've, grouped, I've grouped such categories, in, I've grouped the problem today into four such categories, ethically, politically, socially, and economically. Ethically, my answer is no. Politically, my answer is yes. Socially, my answer is yes. And economically, my answer is yes. Today, the only no comes from ethics, but the belief within myself sees a world in the future, which that can also be a yes. However, unfortunately, we look to see a world that does not exist today, where those in power, those with education, and those with money have dominated those within the systems of law enforcement and harm reduction that has created the war on drugs today. Thank you very much.